Greetings everyone, my name is Adderville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. In this pre-recorded episode, I'll be covering a combination of both Fierce Man levels and other levels I found online, primarily focusing on the former. So first on today's lineup is Partrons 2 Episode 3 Red Mission Investigate the Oil Refinery Fixed by Le Patio with 87 plays and a score of 34. Starting off with a Le Patio stage, I expect some difficulty. As I'm currently on vacation, this episode is pre-recorded, so no live chat. Pools of oil everywhere. I see what you want me to do there. First I'll deal with the top creators. Took an unnecessary hit there. If I just stood still, I would not have taken damage. Similar situation here, where if I just went left... Wait for the steam to extinguish the, the fire. Dead lurks below. Hmm. Jumping under the steam jets here is building up to something. Whether that's going to be in this stage or in the future fortress stage, I'm not sure. And remember, damage boosting is always your friend. Now the Redtron is morphed into their power form. So this is what I was talking about. I'm guessing the water we're jumping through is the oil, or rather oily water. Made it this time. Watch how that ends up being the most difficult part of the stage, in terms of death count. Neat! We have to travel up this shaft without getting hit by the steam jets. All the while the steam tries to push us into the hot jets.
Sorry for the transition there. Taking advantage of Proto Shield. Launch me forwards, box. And jump. M. Fun stage. Hardest part was the one jump I kept stumbling on. Top lane, eh? Phase 1 complete. Now it's time for the entire team to teleport in. And for all their mechs to show up and combine into one ginormous one. This is the Zord fight of the stage. Same strategy as before, I guess. Or perhaps is there a better one? Yeah, I thought so. My first statement wasn't really accurate. This wasn't really that hard of a stage. There was only really two tricky jumps. And even then, they weren't too difficult to execute. In any case, this gets my upvote. GG. Second up is Gravity Circuit Warehouse Area by Gokulis, with 34 plays and a score of 5. Time for another recreation of a Gravity Circuit stage adapted for Maker. And like I said two weeks ago, I will eventually let's play this game on the channel. Let's go left. A few tricky jumps here and there. And our ward is an extra life. I don't know if I'd say this is worth it, but thanks. Now, if it was an E-Tank, then definitely. I guess as a consolation prize this works. Thanks for the damage boost there. I don't need that chest. Hmm. Do we have separate routes going on? Or is this where one of the hostages would be? Yep, this is where one of the hostages would be. Same with anything up there. I could backtrack here, though. I think that's what they want me to do anyways.
I could do that, but I won't. The stuff happening in the background is a bit distracting. I would have picked a bit of a less flashy background, to be honest. I damage boosted because I wasn't confident enough to do that normally. The boxes tell me where I'm gonna be teleporting out of. I'm really liking the stage design, but this is mostly Gravity Circus stage design. Gokulis is just adapting it for Maker. And based on how fun this stage feels to play, I say they've done a pretty good job at it. Should've stood back a bit. Too high. Expected. Phew. That was a bit close one. That's the problem. Grab the red key this time. Oh, that's only for one of the hostages, isn't it? I'll save them in the full game. And in that game, these spikes are not instant dead. I'm sure of that. I was just trying to go through an optional challenge. That's why it was so difficult. Which makes sense. The optional challenges should be harder. I was a bit worried I'd be knocked into the spikes there. <sighs> Aiming. Oh, 
Honestly, I think the original stage is easier than this annotation. could be up ahead. Ah, that's relatively easier compared to everything we've seen up to this point. And this opens the path for us. But there's more to the left. I know the previous Gravity Circuit recreation stage I played here had a bunch of optional paths, but in this one it's a lot more noticeable, and a lot more challenging as well. Like, I'm dying a lot more often here. Oh my. Go left. Now go right. This has to be the last section. It involves both the teleporters and the switch blocks. I just wish that in this recreation, the background was less distracting. And this marks the end of the stage. Compared with the factory, this was significantly tougher. Especially if you count the side objectives. I recommend it for average to above average skilled maker players. One down. And two down. This stage gets my upvote. And it makes me ever more interested in playing Gravity Circuit. Number three up is MM Plus Remix by Devil Stage Plus Mode by Fire Sawdust with 11 plays and a score of three. With bases dashing and double jumping, these challenges become a lot easier. This section, for example, I need to use a skull bear to jump on top of the spikes, but with bases move set, this is no problem. Mid boss time.
Only downside is the battle against Punk takes longer. <laughs> well, the train office then made this fight a lot easier. Come at me, Nightman. Nightman is a bigger pain, though. Now I may carry over this key to the final section. Outside of the boss fights, Base is basically the easy mode of the stage. And thanks to base's double jump, I have a bit of extra insurance for these jumps. We made it inside the base. Good East Skull Man. And dodging these shots becomes a bigger pain. Like, this is attempt number 3 for me, and by far the hardest part of the stage. But at last he falls. Pluto. This fight on the other hand I find a lot easier. It also helps he doesn't spend half the fight in vulnerable. I'm gonna do all the fights so I have the extra keys. Oh, this is gonna be kind of a painful arena. I think I would have preferred playing as any other character by this point, as the boss fight difficulty well then makes up for the lore difficulty from the platforming.
Never mind. I think this was his weakness. Why are you so bad, Laser? It used to be one of the best weapons in World 5, and it's no slouch in Magnal Tree either. And my reward for defeating all the mid bosses is an M tank. Worth it. Let's rumble, Yellow Devil. Two more cycles should do it. And there we have it. Or is it? Oh no. We'll do it this way then. That's fine. See, no biggie. Stage design wise, this was a pretty fun, challenge oriented fortress stage. Playing in space made most of the platforming challenges a lot more manageable, but the trade off is that all the boss fights become significantly harder. In any case, I give this stage an upvote. Good job, Fire Sawdust. Fourth up is Boring Traditional Level, Low Key Sequel, by Zen, with 44 plays and a score of negative 5. With a score like this, I'm in for some fun times. Fun being in air quotes. The timing on these blocks is pretty tight. Get rid of the pink cloud ASAP. Sweet. 
So far, it's just a bunch of Yoko challenges. Nothing too difficult. Gonna take it nice and slow. I don't recall seeing a checkpoint nearby. Hmm. Ah. Grabbing onto the ladders by accident. Follow me at the char shot. Down. Too early. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank goodness, there's a checkpoint here. I'm starting to understand why the stage got a negative score. If you fail near the end there, like I have done repeatedly, you're sent all the way back to the start of the stage. And due to the nature of the Yoko Block cycling, it takes about 2 minutes to get back there. I can totally understand why many players wouldn't like this sort of challenge. What I would have done is put a checkpoint just before the start of the Force Beam section. I didn't notice the spike up there until the end. I definitely used a different background for this sort of section. Alright, the stage didn't start out that tough, but now we've run into a literal difficulty spike. And to make matters worse, for most of these screens we have the pink cloud enemies to worry about. At least this is one of those stages where you can be patient, and you're not punished for that. Oh no. This is like that one screen from Iceman stage, but even harder. What just happened? And I didn't jump in time. If there's one saving grace, I'm thankful I'm not playing this stage live. Otherwise, we'd probably be stuck here for over half an hour. But thanks to the magic of video editing, it'll only take about 10 minutes at most. Too slow. No, wait, wait. Let's wait. If I were designing the stage, I'd double the checkpoints. I was liking this stage initially, but... Thank you for the E-Tank, but I want a checkpoint. Like, this is the perfect room to have a checkpoint.
Are you kidding? Where is the checkpoint? I'm really starting to understand why I just got a negative score. Uh, another section with this background. It's kind of hard to distinguish the spikes from the green background. Or the green cityscape. Gonna stand up here just to see if there's any tricks. If I die here, I'm just using the level editor. The individual challenges in of themselves are fine. I don't mind the difficulty of them. My issue is the excessive punishment if you fail them. There should have been at least one checkpoint between this and the previous one. And that was incredibly rude. Time to open up the level editor. And how was I supposed to react to this Yoko block popping up? It was off screen, so I couldn't prepare for that. Tap walk. Still not it. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could damage boost this. We're true. Oh my goodness. This was the second checkpoint of the stage. I'm sorry, with how the stage is designed, I'm gonna have to give this a downvote. Not for any of the individual screens or challenges, but because of the checkpoint density. I was willing to overlook the placement of the first checkpoint, but the second one, absolutely not. There should have been at least one or two more checkpoints in between them, because in most of these screens, the punishment for failure is instant death, and you can lose up to 2-5 to five minutes of progress. And these are Yoko based challenges, so you can't really rush through them as much. But that's just my thought. GG. My apologies, but taken as a whole, I didn't like this stage. Fifth up is Crash Man's Revenge by BF Tree with 52 plays and a score of 14. Time for a stage that's hopefully easier. I need a palate cleanser. Even the patio stage wasn't as difficult as Zen's, and that's saying something.
Hey, birdies. After everything I've just been through, it's a welcome sight to see all of you. This is basically a Crash Man stage, but revamped a bit. And it's made a lot easier because I have sliding and charge shots. Two phases, eh? Not a memorable stage, but it does a good job of being a palate cleanser. Sixth up is Needle Canyon Mach 2 by Pirate Kid, with 48 plays and a score of 14. I played previous iterations of this stage before, and they've all been at the very least decent. A bit too generous for my taste, but I'm not complaining. Hey kitty. Bye kitty. What's past here? Any tank. Boss time? Double wind. Proto Man makes this fight a lot easier. A 
especially with his charge shots and shield. Another M tank. Ran right into those. Yeah, I need this. Oh. Whoops. And I die trying to get it. I wish you could see the needle presses before they fully extend. And get me in. That will really save you. It only prolonged your life for a few seconds. As it stands right now, this stage is currently my honorable mention. I don't really need that E. Good introductions, good escalation, and decent enough climax. This gets my upvote. Double magnets. One down. And thank you for making them weak to the buster. It makes this fight progress at a smooth pace. Is this it? We could end the stage right now. But there's one challenge left I'd like to check out. Double tops. Gotta dispatch one quickly before they desync.
And that's both of them down. Now I can complete the stage with honors. As I said, this is currently the honorable mention of this episode. Good job, Pirate Kid. Seventh up is someone tries to melt base but accidentally melts everyone else. Don't move until you get Magma Bazooka by Hyper Mega Man with 15 plays and a score of 3. Down goes the hot dog. Down goes the lantern fish. Down goes the Tama. Down goes the four whoppers. Down goes the squidron. Down goes the snowman. Down goes three of these enemies. And standing still. Come on. Down goes the two helicopters. Down goes Dark Man. Down goes another Dark Man clone. The next clone as well. Who's left? Basis clone? Four of the arms from Mega Man 1. Five of the arms from Mega Man 2. Four of the arms from Mega Man 3. Four from 4. We're running through all the games, aren't we? Four from 5. Five from six. Three from seven. Two from eight. Three from and base. Three from nine. Three from ten. Two from eleven. Pluto from World 5. You two again? We just melted you. And that's all the mid bosses and RMs. Now we're moving on to the fortress bosses. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dr. Kazax roasted. This takes us back to the start of the stage. I don't think this was intended. Whoops. Let's try this again, shall we? So long, Wily. Remember, the title told me not to move until I get the bazooka. But for bosses like this, you have to move because they're RNG based. Otherwise, there's no guarantee you'll actually make it true. Unless you get very lucky. I only have one shot at this, however, and I can't travel too far to the edge. <laughs> Goodbye. As a joke stage, it didn't really tickle my fancy. Too much of the same setup without enough variation. A top is Multipath Tower by Kerber and Kirby with 31 plays and a score of 7. This stage has 4 routes. I'll be checking out all of them, starting with the left one. Simply a bunch of Yoko screens. After going to a Zen stage, these are nothing. And this was a left route. On to the middle route. I'll need the brake dash in order to access the fourth one. This was the easiest of the four routes by far. And this stage is strangely devoid of enemies. I get what it's trying to accomplish, but... And the right route.
speed up the fight. Now for the bonus route. I do like how each route focuses on a different set of gimmicks, but for a stage titled Multipath Tower, I was hoping that each route would be at least three times as long. As the gimmicks aren't really explored that much, this is especially noticeable with the complete absence of enemies. Best part of the stage. Ninth up is Forest Grappler by Biscuit Man with 150 plays and a score of 57. Initiating Thunderclaw action. Mood. With the checkpoint right here, it's low risk. Fairly simple and straightforward Thunderclaw stage. This could have been harder and more detailed, but that's not what the stage was trying to be. It was aiming to be a basic to intermediate challenge. Only real challenging part was the boss fight. So the 10th and final level of this episode is Gravity Moon Base by Crimson Knight with 92 plays and a score of 31. I like the screen. And that's it. That's a shame. This just felt like the introductory part of the stage. So overall, of the 10 levels I covered in today's premiere episode, my favorite one would be Mega Man Plus Remix by Devil Stage Plus Mode. 
by Fire Sawdust, with an honorable mention going to Needle Canyon Mach 2 by Pirate Kid. Thank you to everyone who either submitted the levels or simply participated in the live premieres chat. It's due to your continued support why I continue to produce new content for the channel. It is really appreciated. Now, normally I'd have an art showcase at the end of this episode, but I've decided to punt it over to next week, as next Saturday, I'm returning to regular streaming, so I hope to see you all there. In any case, if you're enjoying this or any other piece of content on the channel, please rate, comment, favorite, and or subscribe, as they all help it out. Don't forget to follow me on X, Macedon, Co-host, and Blue Sky as well, and join my Discord server, as I regularly post updates there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in a future episode.